this will be living up to our expectations and our goals here in golden arena of equipping your lives and ultimately affecting your destinies as we dive into another session of our empowerment sunday empowerment sunday have been kept in place for each and every one of us here in golden arena to give us the opportunity to learn practical ways to improve our lives improve our relationship with others improve our career and also improve our personal development which is all still rooted in the word of god how amazing is that in our last empowerment sunday we started a new series on activating the greatness within you we learned that the seed of success is in you. Success is first inside of you before it is manifested on the outside. In today's Sunday service, we'll be moving on to module two of activating the greatness within you. So please prepare yourself for what would be a great and empowering Sunday service. Be expectant, be attentive, and be blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Happy Sunday to everyone. Happy Sunday. Can we all rise and begin to worship God? We are in the presence of the Almighty. The word of the Lord says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is. We are more than two, we are more than three. So the Lord is right here in our midst. Let's just begin to worship him. Let's just begin to adore the name of our God, our King, our Savior, the God who has kept us, the God who has lavished us with his love, the God who is good, the God who is merciful. Every day he shows us new mercy. With the rising of the sun and the setting of the same, it speaks of his glory, he speaks of his goodness, it speaks of his love. Let's just bless the name of our God. Let's prepare our hearts to worship him. Let's just look unto Jesus. Let's look unto our Savior. Let's look unto the reason why we can be here. The reason why we can enter into the holies of holies. Let's look unto Jesus who has broken down the wall of partition. Let's look unto Jesus who has given us access to the Father. Let's look unto Jesus who has given us access to the throne of grace let's look on to jesus who gave it all for us who gave everything that we may come to the father that we may be reconciled to the father so that now we can cry abba father oh let's bless the name of our god let's bless the name of jesus let's bless the spirit of the living god who dwells in within us let's lift up the name of of god let's lift up the name of jesus let's bless the spirit of god who is in our midst Ramato Oh Lord, we bless you, Lord. We give you all the glory, Lord. We give you all the honor, Lord. We say you are worthy, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We give you all the glory. You are mighty. You are faithful. You are God. There is none like you, Lord. Oh, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Oh, our God is mighty. He is seated on his throne. 
It is you that we see, Jesus, 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 Jesus. It's only you, Jesus. It's only you, Jesus. Emano Sakira, Emano Sere. Oh, we bless your name, Jesus. Enama kusa yara da do sayara da. Ona masoke enama do. Has come to worship you. The one you save has come to worship you. In a masuda yana mano se se.
Thou art exalted far above all the earth, for Thou, O Lord, Thou, O Lord, above all the earth, you are higher, you are higher. Oh, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will always worship. Oh, oh. 
song says as long as I am breathing that song says I will not be silent do not allow your pain to silence you do you not allow your lack to silence you do not allow your finances to silence you do not allow your moods to silence you worship the Lord this morning say to that situation I will not be silent I will not allow you to silence me I will not allow you to keep me quiet but I will praise the Lord I will praise the King I will lift up his name I will give him the praises that he is due say to that situation I will not be silent say to the Lord I will not be silent as long as I am breathing I will worship you and I will and I
what can take your place? So, what deserves the praise that you are due, oh God? worship you. 
and the last song that we sang says Lord be lifted high beloved I want you to just go ahead and lift him high just I give you just one minute to just go ahead and just lift him high in your own way just go ahead and appreciate him appreciate him for life appreciate him for good health appreciate him for sound mind when you thank God all your problems all your situations begin to disappear when you begin to thank him for that which he has done for that which he has going to he's going to do he begins to even do more when Jesus Christ was going to multiply bread the first thing he did was to give thanks when he was going to raise Lazarus up from the dead the first thing he do, he did was give thanks so it tells me that if I want to make God multiply anything in my life I must thank him for it if you complain about things you are causing God to multiply those things in your life but if you go ahead and thank him for that which he has done and even in advance for that which he is going to do you begin to attract him to bring good things in your life so just go ahead and begin to thank him father we bless you even for an hour like this oh God we thank you we are not gathered unto man oh God we have come before you oh God you have not caused us to seek you in vain oh God Lord we thank you because in your presence is fullness of joy and at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore thank you thank you thank you because where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Lord we thank you because as we begin to behold you oh God you cause our face to be radiant the Bible says that he causes their faces to be radiant they that look upon him Lord I thank you because as I keep my heart focused on you oh the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Spirit Lord I appreciate you Lord I give you thanks thank you thank you father thank you father thank you father thank you father in Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you so much fire thank you so much that was wonderful <laughs> praise the Lord I'm glad that I'm not the the person who is supposed to teach please have your seats please have your seats I'm glad that I'm, I'm not the one that is supposed to teach because um, with with worship it's very easy um, for us to just get lost worshiping God I don't know about you but anytime I worship God I literally focus on him with my heart and I see him that is the key to worship if you can actually see God Bible says we worship him in the beauty of his holiness when you can behold that beauty when you can truly behold that beauty in your heart you will see worship rising from within you and it's not going to matter the performance of the choir you will literally even forget that they are there you just begin to worship God in the beauty of his holiness I pray that God will help us in Jesus name amen very quickly before I, I, I bring in our speaker who blessed us uh, the last time greatly I've been trying to convince him to to go for that because I'm privy to know that there is more but he wants to he wants to stop but we'll see Holy Spirit will speak to him so that he can continue but before he comes just so that we can benefit so much from when he comes here you see it's very important the state of our heart before any message is being is is, is being preached or any teaching is, is is done you see before Jesus Christ came though he was the word he needed John the Baptist to prepare the way so that hearts will be ready because the state of your heart when the message is going on the readiness of your heart is what will determine how much you will get from it praise the Lord very quickly I want to read a few scriptures Ezekiel chapter 40 Ezekiel chapter 40 I'm gonna read verse 2 and maybe two other verses verse 2 says in the visions of God I'm reading from Amplified he brought me to the land of Israel and set me down on a very high mountain I want you to take note of that he set me down on a very high mountain on the south side of which there was what seemed to be a structure of a city praise the Lord so he brought me there and behold there was a man with a line of flax and a measuring rod in his hand I'm gonna jump um, to verse 4 it says the man said to me son of man look with your eyes son of man look with your eyes he went ahead and said and hear with your ears and hear with your ears and set your heart set your heart on all that I am going to show you there are three things that require that is required for it for to be alive or to be attentive if you are going to receive any message you must look with your eyes you must hear with your ears and you must set your heart you must set your heart remember whatever wherever your heart goes so you go you cannot hear if your heart is not there you cannot see if your heart is not is not is not look is not there 
it is what you set your heart on that you will see and you will hear the eyes do not see what the heart is not set on the ears do not hear what the heart is not set on so as we begin as we as we uh, we, we invite the speaker very soon to speak i, I just want you to go ahead and uh, even as he's, he's going to be coming up just begin to say lord help my heart focus help my eyes see and hear my ears here in the name of jesus very quickly again i'm going to read another verse first john first john i was going to do an illustration but because of time i would not i wouldn't be able to do that first john I'm going to read verse verse 5 verse 5 and 6 it says they who teach twisted doctrine are of the world and belong to it therefore they speak from the viewpoint of the world they speak from the viewpoint of the world with its immoral freedom and baseless theories okay i'm going to jump straight to verse 6 it says we who teach God's word are from God, energized by the Holy Spirit. And whoever knows God through personal experience listens to us. Praise the Lord. Whatever you will see or whatever you will hear is based on what your heart is focused on, but is also based on where you stand, your viewpoint. When he called the Son of Man, he, the Bible says he set him on a, on a mountain. He set him on a mountain. What you see is dependent on where you're where what you're looking at what you're focused on so today the teacher will be teaching and many people will get different things from the teaching but it will be based on what they see when i stand and i look to my left i can see david and i can see emmanuel when i stand and i look to my right i can see a white wall or whatever you want to call it so when the teacher is speaking today when he's teaching he's teaching us something very key do you know that what is inside of you is more important than what is around you because it is what is inside of you that will influence and change the things that are around you the bible tells us specifically that a man will reap the fruit of his lips and the things that come out of your mouth jesus told us is from the abundance of our heart so the things that are being taught to us are able to change us. They are able to make us. They are able to build us up. Because who we become is more important than everything that we have. What we have can only be sustained by what we have become. Whatever, it is, whatever is still around you is there because it is sustained by what is inside you. So as we invite the teacher now to speak, I want you to remember the importance of this topic is talking about greatness in, in you it is in you it is in you but it is what you allow to get inside of you that will make you join me as we welcome the speaker brokayode Praise God. Um, before we go on, I'd like to make a confession that um, I have no words to transform anyone today. If God does not enlighten our hearts, if he doesn't send his word, there will be no real transformation. For he sends his word. And he heals us of our diseases and delivers us from our destruction. And today, I don't know if you are present. I know you are present here. But really, in the presence of God, it's not physical presence that matters. It's the presence of your heart. And this morning, I, I, I just want, we're going to take another shot at worshiping God by one song. But I want your heart to be there. Your heart to be there. The presence of God. The presence of God is what is needed, right? I can say all I want, right? But if God does not transform, the Bible says Paul, as great as he is, he plants. Apollos, as eloquent as he is, he would water. But actually, it is God that makes and gives the increase. So we're just, I'm just gonna sing this song. You don't need to stand up. Really, like I said, it's not your physical presence, it's your heart. 
And we're just going to sing this song, and of course, instrumentalist, you don't need to come back. Um, I don't want you going back and forth. <laughs> El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, it to age are still the same. By the power of your name, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, I will praise and lift you up, El Shaddai. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, it to age are still the same, by the power of your name. El Shaddai, El Shaddai, Elohim and Adonai, I will praise and lift you up, El Shaddai. Lord, I just come into your presence this evening, this morning, we all come with the veils taken off our faces, we turn to you, O oh God, and we pray that you cause a transformation. Cause a transformation in our hearts, in our minds, in the name of Jesus. Take control of every word that is going to be spoken, every communication, that it is backed up by your grace and your power as you have spoken. We do not speak in the wisdom of men, but in the communication of what the Spirit is saying, in the name of Jesus. To you alone will be all the glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Before, before we go on, I believe that there is someone here that you, you are feeling heavy. Probably something is going on within your life and all of that. I want you to know that there is an exchange going on this morning. An exchange. The spirit of the heaviness is taken away and the garment of praise, the hoil of gladness, the garment of praise. I decree in the name of Jesus, the oil of gladness, the garment of praise, in the name of Jesus, within your heart, the oil of gladness, the garment of praise, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen, amen. Welcome once again to today's um, um, uh, Empowerment Sunday. Um, it was a pleasure being here the last time, and we're going to be continuing from where we stopped. We started a series that was titled, The Greatness Within You. The Greatness Within You. And if I can have my slides up, if that's possible. So, The Greatness Within You. The last time we spoke a lot about the fact that there is something inherently inside of every one of us. The critical part of your success is not given to another. We spoke about um, the fact that um, self-image, the way you see yourself, determines, we, determines what happens in our lives. We looked at um, um, the 12 spies. We looked at a report of 10 of them. And we came to a conclusion that all 12 had the same God, God had the same covenant with them, right? We came to the conclusion that they had the same opponent. Their opponents were not different. Those that occupied the land were those that occupied the land. It was not different for the ten and the two. It was the same. The same God, the same opponent. And we said the fact that they had a different self-image meant that their results were different. And I said last time as powerful as god he is the creator of the heavens and the earth the one who collects those things that were do, uh, do, those things that were not do as if they were it seemed like he had no 
it could not change much in this case because of the difference in their self-image. The difference in their self-image. They said, we looked at those that were in the land and we are like grasshoppers unto them in our minds. Right? And then the two said, no, they are like bread unto us. And at the end of the day, really, they got different results. The way you see yourself is really critical to the results you get out of life. The way you see yourself is critical to the results that you get out of life. I've seen again and again that people, um, when we, not, I shouldn't say people, but when we as human beings begin to struggle with self-image, certain things start to happen. You begin to pick quarrels with people who were not quarreling with you, right? You begin to take certain actions to please some other people who were not, who were not looking for you to please them because you are not secured in who you are. The reality is that if you look through the scriptures, when God appears to people, or when he comes to people, I shouldn't use the word appear, but when he comes to people, one of the first thing he tries to change is the way they see themselves. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is to get into the place where he could see himself the way God sees him. The reason we read our Bibles is not to tick boxes. The reason we read our Bibles is not, is not to feel religious. It's not to, um, it's not to pacify a guilty conscience. We, tr we are transformed if we are able to see what God is saying to us as a people, as, a, as individuals, when we pay attention to what God is saying. Because God is in the business of transformation. The word transformation has two words in it. The trans, which is the same thing you find in transfer, transport, and of course, formation. It means that as you go in the journey, as you go in the journey of life, there is an expectation from God that if you follow me, I will make you. The journey with God is a making journey. It's a formation journey. And that formation journey also has within itself self, the way you perceive who you are. So God can begin to speak to you at the start of your Christian journey to begin to wash you of the things that had been ingrained into your mind, some things that culture, maybe your situation, your family situation has ingrained into your mind, the, the fact that because you are from a particular state, you have to be getting hungry, right? He begins to wash those things off your mind. And then you begin to see yourself in the way God sees you. And because in the multitude of knowledge you can be puffed up then it begins to realize that look you are seeing yourself beyond uh, you know Paul said that lest I be exalted beyond measure he, then he then brings when he has opened your eyes to see before you think that it's only you <laughs> that God has made to be who he, or, or God is speaking to he begins to do things in your life to begin to shape you such that you have a balanced view of life so uh, um, that is just, um, I wanted to go back at some of the things we, we said last time. And one of the thoughts we also talked about was that that you cannot see the value does not mean it does not exist. We showed here the, the um, mustard seed, very tiny seed. And we said within 90 days, that seed has the potential to be as tall as Owe, right? Now... Uh, oh, oh, and for, for first timers or those who are coming in for the first time, um, Owe is, was, is my boss, the guy who was up here before me, right? <laughs> so, um, and um, the second thought that we shared the last time, was, I mean, the, the fifth thought um, uh, that we shared the last time is that what people say does not really dictate what value you carry. 
I, 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 we looked at the mustard seed and we brought samples as well. And I said, if you put it on your, on your chair, right? If you put it on your chair, as we speak now, if you, because you don't know what it is, most of us will bin it. And the fact that you binned it, or you didn't know what it is, or you treated it like trash, does not actually change the fact that it is a mustard seed. Please, can I get water? Thank you. Uh, so, does not change the fact that it is a mustard seed. So, what people say, what people think, does not change the e inherent value that is within you. Right? And we also said that it is small does not mean it is useless. It is so tiny, and we showed pictures and all of that the last time. It is so tiny that you can think, what can this little thing do? And in life, God, we, we, we saw last time that we have right now 7.9 billion people upon the earth, but God started with one. Right? He wanted a family, he started with one. Now, you would think about it, if God's, in God's mind he was thinking about 7.9 billion, yet he's st starting with one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mark. Apologies for that. So he started with one. Now, what is one in 7.9 billion? Now, as I'm saying it about people, you might not realize it. Let's, let's bring it into something we can relate with. One pound, 7.9 billion pounds. If someone gives you one pound and says, this will turn to 7.9 billion pounds, what, what you would think this guy is, how can this thing turn into this? But over time, what happened is God was able to, from one, bring 7.9 billion. And I, I always like to pause here to say, why are you despising the little thing you have? Because it's not as big as what you perceive that hoarders have. I'm still going um, through the things we did last time, so I'll just rush through. The absence of results does not mean lack of potential. And last time I couldn't get to this part. So um, apologies if you are not an Arsenal fan, but the guy is wearing a Man U jersey, right? <laughs> but apologies. Now this guy is said to be one of um, the most prolific strikers that has graced the Premier League. Apologies if you don't like football. We'll, we'll talk about something else as well. At his peak, it was said that by his left leg, he could take a pin out of your eye. And some of you are football fans will remember an iconic goal he scored against Barcelona that is almost humanly impossible. Yet this guy, was, when he started his career, in fact, when he got to Arsenal, he was not a striker. He was not a prolific goal scorer. So a man looks at him and says, oh, we don't have anybody to fill that position, so we feel you will fill the position, and I can see you thriving there. Because that was, not his, that was not what he had done before, he struggled. After seven games, he had not scored a single goal. Now, if you understand the Premier League, you know that is really bad. He had not scored a single goal. Yet, when you look at a chart of the most prolific strikers ever is on number four. At the fifth game, there was no result. Does it mean that the future in that role is not bright? The answer, now that we have seen what happened, is no. But put yourself in his shoes. Would you have just said, look, I'm not doing this anymore? There are many, 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 many people, of course, if you know this guy as well, he's also on the chat, I think number two or number one, right? 
the same, exactly the same thing, subtly the same thing happened to him. Now, you guys who are science-based would know who this guy is, Albert Einstein. Um, he's said to be the greatest scientist that has ever lived. At the age of five, he had not said a complete sentence. At the age of 22, all his life he had been an average student. I mean, very, I mean, very, very average. It's not as in very average. But he had a strong imaginative power. This guy didn't go through the ranks like you know it. Like maybe he did his first degree, master's, PhD. No, 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 no. He didn't. In fact, he was a clerk in a patent office. But today, he died a long time ago, we reckon, He's the greatest scientist. Lack of results does not mean lack of potential. That you are not getting results now, that the marriage is not working, that the, your Christian life, you are falling and standing, does not mean you cannot become. It does not mean you cannot be transformed. It does not mean the future is not bright. That you failed maths does not mean that that's it. That you failed in school does not mean that that's it with life. Because there is, God created everyone such that inside of you is an innate intelligence that no one else, even if nobody sees it, the capacity to grow is inside of it. So that brings us nicely to today's um, topic, which is not until you grow. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 to 2. Now I say that the hair, as long as it is a child, I want you Pay attention to those words and let, let your eyes get contact with those words, right? Now, the heir, as long as is a child, does not differ at all from a slave. Though he is master of all, but he is under guidance and stewards until the time appointed by the father. As long as he's a child, does not mean that he's a slave. He says, he, he, in terms of what he can do, he can serve, but he can't be given authority. He can serve, but he has no right to dispense certain things. Because as long as he's a child, he differs not. From a servant. It does not differ at all from a slave, though the Bible acknowledges that his eventual destiny is that he will be master of all, but for now, because he is a child. Ah, I, I don't want to jump along uh, uh, ahead of myself because there are many things in that scripture. So, the word as long as talks about time. And then he says that until an appointed time by the father. And we'll come to that. So we see the concept of being a child, the concept of time, and the concept of guidance and stewards. Right? We see that. So if you don't like KJV English, this is NLT. He said, think of it this way. For if, fa if a father dies, he leaves an inheritance for his young children. Those children are not better off than slaves because they can't be given those inheritances, uh, the inheritance just yet, until they grow up. Even though they actually own everything their father had. Matthew chapter 25 Verse 14 to 13. Um, and this is where we all open our Bibles. Um, if someone can help me give Anita, um, Anita, sorry, I should have told you before. 
before time. And Mike, Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. 14 to 30. Yeah. Any translation? NLT. NLT. Okay. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be ir- illustrated by the story of a He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He then left on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant with two bags of silver also went to work and earned two more. But the servant who received the one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and called them to give an account of how they had used his money. The servant, to whom he had entrusted the five bags of silver, came forward with five more and said, Master, you gave me five bags of silver to invest and I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. The servant who had received the two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags of silver to invest, and I have earned two more. The master said, Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate together. Then the servant with the one bag of silver came and said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant and gathering crops that you didn't cultivate. I was afraid I would lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money back. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant, if you knew I harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops I didn't cultivate, why didn't you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest on it. Then he ordered, Take the money from the servant and give it to the one with the ten bags of silver. To those who use well what they are given, even more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who do nothing, even what little they have will be taken away. Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So, I wanted us to read that entire verse because um, we'll be looking at certain points there. So, let's look at certain excerpts from, from that. The first thing is, if you can see that, that the master only gave talent or bags of silver, only not on the fact that he liked them. He didn't give based on just mercy. He didn't give based on, uh, based on friendship. The Bible says he gave each servant based on their abilities. And that translation will say capacity. Now, the master here is is seen to be a master who knows his servant. And he says that I'm going away, but I'm going to give each one something. But everything he gave was based simply not on life happening, based simply on the fact that they had the capacity and the ability to deal with it. Now, fast forward to the end. If if, if, if I had had my way, I'll have like three people here, but let's, let's, let's go on. Fast forward to the end, we find that although we started with five, two, and one, right? We, at the end, we seem to have had 11, four, and zero. Uh, Please, go with me here. We started with five, two, and one. At the end, we were with 11, four, and zero. What really happened? 
If I ask you, you will say they doubled it. And the master was angry with one and he gave. But there is a salient point because within this organization, nobody would undo anything that they don't have the capacity to handle. Therefore, at the start, we had the guy with five ends up with 11. What happened? His capacity had grown. Because, remember, he will not be able to handle or he will never be given what he does not have capacity for. In doing and trading with what was given to him, what happened was that his capacity to handle even more increased. It seemed as the more he traded, the more he grew. The more he, pro he, he had profit, the more he grew. Because really, it is not what you get paid for what you do that matters. It is really what you become while you do it. So, I also want you to know that it is not necessarily that the master did not want to give the guy with five 11 at the start. Inside the man with five is the man with 11. Inside the seed is the tree. Inside the seed is the plantation. Inside the seed, but as long as he is a child, a different not from a servant. <laughs> as long as the guy with five remains where he is, we will never see him with eleven. He will never undo 11 because the heir, as long as he is a child, as long as he decides not to grow, we will not see a real transformation in his person. The other thing we also find is that the master was happy about the fact. Now, now, you would have read that story and thought the master was happy with the more money. Yes, but the master knew a lot more. Because you see, when he, they spoke about more money, he says, now you will have more responsibilities. Because he was happy with their increase in capacity. There are certain things that you might have wished for, heard of, had prophesied unto you, that will never happen until the version of you that can handle that appears. If that version doesn't appear, it will still remain with the master. So, the master was happy about the increase in capacity. We also find that because the master knew what he was doing, he was not just happy about the money, but he was happy about the increase in capacity because the increase in capacity of the servants mean that he would be able to put in their hands more and, of course, they can take more responsibility. And of course, we know that God, that master, is a typology of God. Right? He's, he's a story that was told such that we can see that the master was God. That, that, was, that was what Jesus was trying to do with the story. And then, I can then safely put onto you that God is more interested in making you than giving you. I 
know that what most of us want is to be given something. But he said unto Abraham, he said, I will bless you and you will become a blessing. So being a blessing is different from having a blessing. Is more interested in making you than giving you. That's why he said unto Peter, follow me and I will make you. He didn't say, follow me, let's go and evangelize. No, he said, follow me and in your followership of me. Okay, think about it. Just use your imaginations here, right? Um, think about a few steps ahead of me. The guy with the five talent. And the guy with the one talent is where I am standing. Jesus takes your hand and says, follow me and I will make you. Remember what we said about transformation. Forming you as we go. Transformation. Takes your hand. Follow me and I will make you. The other thing, the other way we can say this is that God is more interested in you becoming than in Why did it break? Because the tree has grown. There are things that we will continue to struggle with until we grow. No growth, those things will remain. And that's the truth of life. You cannot pray away what your ignorance has brought. I know it sounds hard, but you can't pray away what your lack of growth has brought. Because the child, as long as he is a servant, or as long as he is a child, the heir, as long as he is a child, it will look like he's just a servant until he grows up. So, Let's bring it more contemporary because I know I've, I've, I've spoken about this spiritual aspect. Now, having and becoming. We are found over and over again and measures are being put in place in, in real life now that those who win millions of pounds in um, lotteries, yes, lotteries, after a couple of years, there, there are a lot of stories of that. They are worse than they were before they won. And we've also heard of certain millionaires that lost everything and after a couple of years, they had it back. The difference, one had the money. They had the, it's having, right? One had become. If you have become a millionaire, it is not the millions that made you. It is you that made the millions. If you have millions, you have it. If it's taken away, you would have to go and play the lottery again to win. I, I, are we getting somewhere now? So, as a father, what do you think God would prefer? Ensuring that you become. So he says unto Mary and Martha, he says, Mary has chosen the right part. It cannot be taken from him. 
Now, let's think about that parable. Please let me know when, I, I, I'm not tracking my time well, sorry. But let me know when, just let me know. Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So, but let's, let's go like this and not rush it. So, now Mary and Martha, Jesus came to visit them and he says, Mary has chosen the right path. It shall not be taken away from her. Now, if you think back to that parable, you would see that because the master gave based on capacity, on capability, at the end of the story, the man with five had become 11, right? You know the master can take the talent, but he can't take the capacity. Yes, the master can take the talent, but the guy has become... You see, and this is why, actually, employers look for experience. They, have, they are looking for people who have become, not people who know. So, having and becoming. I, I just explained the difference there. So, the servant with the one talent misunderstood all of this. He misunderstood the master. So, he thought the master was all about having. He said, you want to reap where you do not sow. <laughs> He didn't realize that he might have looked at the guy with five and think and thought, well, why am I getting one in, in this place where all of us are the same? <laughs> he didn't realize that the one with five is a picture of who he can become if he grows. It is a picture of who he can become if he follows that journey and grows. So, his misunderstanding made him despise what he had. Because really, if we follow the story through and begin to imagine the story going over and over again, going over and over again, you will see that the, the capacity really or where they get to is really dependent on them. That the guy with five can end up, if we continue this story, <laughs> if we continue living this life, if he's given more time, he can get to 500. But the man with one has ended up with zero because his consciousness is about having, not becoming. His consciousness is really about I will get it on a platter of gold. His consciousness really is not that I will grow. It is that why do I have this small thing? Now, from where you are, what are the things that you are despising because you don't like the quantity? Because it is small, you despise it and you go on, is it the California gold rush, going to seek for treasures where there is none, despising what God has given you. And that's why God says that despise not the days of small beginning. Because if Instagram were to be in the days of Jesus, you won't hear of him until he was 30. And day one, day two, day three, week three, you can see a flyer that says upcoming minister. It's not upcoming. He has come. <laughs> I, I, I hope this helps you because you didn't see the upcoming. It's when you saw it that I said, who is this, who is this new one? <laughs> The making had happened. The problem we have many times is people have not been made. You know when a seed is on the ground, it's not when you see the false, first sprouting of the leaf, it's not when the leaf actually came out. There are certain things still coming out underground. But there is this wanting to show myself. 
Now, there's a story I heard of about, and it's a true story. Uh, uh, I didn't know I was going to give it as an example. I would have gotten the details, but it goes like this. That there was a time in a particular Western country, years ago, I think it was after the World War or something like that, and they wanted to construct a bridge. And they were not sure um, how to get the money, how to pay back the money for the bridge. So they said, okay, we don't want to get the poor to pay for this. We just want to get the rich to pay for it. So they said, how will we know those who are rich? Oh, within this town, the rich people wear shoes. And the poor people don't. So anyone who wears shoes gets to pay because they are rich. And they found that after a long time, the poor borrowed to wear shoes because they wanted to look rich. And the rich took off their shoe because they didn't want to pay for the bridge. And it might sound funny to you, but the reality is that when we try to look like we have become, we pay for it. You pay a high price. You actually don't grow. And it's likely because this guy has taken a decision not to do anything because of his wrong perception. But he thought he was hurting the master. But at the end of the day, as we can see, who was he hurting? Himself. He took upon himself to take a decision that he had not become to take. Here is the talent trade with it. He had not become, he doesn't have the authority to do that. So as long as he's a child, it differs not from a servant. Because it is small does not mean it is worthless. I know we said it, it does not mean it is useless before. But it does not mean it is worthless. Now, the, if you look at the way it's put there, the worth and the less are separated not, be, not because it was a mistake. It's on purpose. I'm not saying that worthless. All of us now know that it's not worthless. But we are saying that it is not worth less than what the other guy has. <laughs> what the guy with five had I know it looks, in terms of monetary terms, it looks more. But really, where he was coming from, he was probably at your level before. So what you've got is worth the same because you can become the same. You can grow in a different path and become a colossus in that which God has called you to be. You don't have to look at someone else and say it is worth more, and then stop what you're doing. No. Pay attention to your seed. Then it grows. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we still following? So we look at Mark chapter 4, verse 31 to 33. Then he said, this is Jesus, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we picture it. It is like a mustard seed which it is sown on the ground and it is smaller than all seeds. I explained the last time that when Jesus said this, he was talking um, to a group of people who within that region the mustard seed was the smallest in that region. It does not mean that the mustard seed is the smallest in the whole world. Right? So the people he was talking to all they have seen is that mustard seed is the smallest seed, right? But when it, sh it's, it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and the shoots and, and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. Now this really strikes me because Jesus did not say he grows up to become a tree and then he, he has fruits and then you can take the mustard seed and replicate it like every other human being would say 
Jesus seemed to have deviated from the norm and he says, I know you understand that bit, but I want to talk to you about another side. And he says that it is the smallest, it grows up, it becomes greater, so the birds of the hair may nest under his shade. And that made me begin to think that, wait, this seed would have been in danger, would have been a prey to the birds of the hair if it never grew past the seed level. They would have been able to pick it without mercy. But when it grew, it began to shelter them. Oh, it grew such that those who would have attacked it now find comfort within its infrastructure. And aside from it producing a tree, producing more uh, mustard seed, the bird would have been eaten up as a seed. The, the, the birds would have eaten up the seed, but now they would have to rest under it because it has grown. Simply because it has grown. So, the seed has the potential, as you saw it, as small as it is, to, 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 to host the birds of the sky. But potential without growth leaves the seed at the mercy of the birds. I don't know if you have seen in life people who had potential and never became anything. The real missing point is growth. Growth. So, potential needs, leads nowhere without growth. Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2 again. And it says, think of it this way. If a father dies, and leaves his inheritance for his young children. Those children are not much better off until they grow. So my question to you, my question to you is that what area of your life are you looking for a different result? Have you grown in that area? Because we, we, we realize that our results can only change when we grow. Could it be that on that matter, I know you are Baba on other matters, but on that matter, could it be that you are a child? Now, this is not to get to anybody. Even last week, I had to sit with my wife and I was saying uh, that I, I, I need to grow in this area. I said, look, I have a confession to make. I seem to like this thing. And it was something related to work. And I realized that if my heart is always there, it leaves me as a prey. So I need to grow to the point where even if it doesn't come, you can't guess what it is, but even if it doesn't come, I don't fret. I don't begin to act up. So on that matter, are you... Have you grown? Is it a matter of you being just a child? Right? Could it be that you are despising the need to grow on that part of your life? What do you need to grow? How do you... Are you just waiting for growth to happen or not? I've been told I have five minutes, so I will use the five minutes prudently. This the fight. <laughs> so one of the things that I find in life, and I find this with kids a lot, that they think they know a lot because they know something that is small. I, have you seen a three-year-old call a one-year-old a baby? Then one day I sat down and I thought, okay, let's add 70 years to their age. 
will the 71 year old person call the 73 a baby? No. But at some point, he called him a baby. Why? Because he's a child. So, some people have strong confidence, not because they know something on that matter. It's because they think they know, but they don't know. But until we come down on all matters, not just some, all matters. Now, when I came up, I said I, said I, I wanted to make a confession. No, I, I was not trying to impress you. No, it's my work with God that I'm... <laughs> I'm concerned about with those statements and getting my heart in the right shape to do this. Right? So, as we begin to go in life, the more we begin to exert ourselves to grow, the more we realize we don't know much. And then, you will see that the confidence level of an expert is not even as high as the confidence level of the ignorant man. Grow. Don't be confident for nothing. <laughs> Don't deceive yourself. Grow. So, if I thought we, were, <laughs> I thought we'd be able to do this time and result, but I'll give you two minutes of that, and I won't use the slides because the slides slows me. So, does thing will things change with time? If you leave it all to time, because I've heard this a lot, give it time. Because time as a factor in itself changes nothing. But the truth is things change with time. But these are the kind of changes that we hear in Ecclesiastics and in Proverbs where he says that the fool folds his hands and everything comes to ruins. If I leave food here and we go, with time it will change. Only that it won't change in the way I want it to change. If you want a direct change, if you know the results, you have to be to some extent in control of the impute. It is garbage in, garbage out, guys. It is not a matter of fold your hand, sit, and let's see how it goes. It is up to me. It is up to you. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for today. We thank you for your word. We pray, O oh God, that it becomes something in our hearts that causes a transformation. To you alone be all the glory. In Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. How many of us are blessed? Everyone. Thank God. All right. I'm just going to go through my notes. I have 17 points from what he said today. Um, that I just want to pull out to just recap everything that he has blessed us he has blessed us with number one for capacity to grow one must engage that which he currently has within him for capacity to grow one must engage that which he currently has within him number two your allocation will always be based on your capacity your allocation will always be based on your capacity. Number three, when you increase your capacity, your responsibility will increase and so will your reward. When you increase your capacity, your responsibility will increase and the reward that you're looking for will also increase. Number four, as your capacity increases, what God can and will do with you also increases. God use me, God use me, God use me. But you have not become. He can't use that until you become. Number five, God is more interested in making you than giving you. God is more interested in making you than giving you. He puts it another way. He said, God is more interested in you becoming than in you having. God is more interested in you becoming than in you having. And why is that? Number six, what you become is a source, but what you have is a resource. A resource can be depleted. A source cannot. This is why becoming is more important than having. 
You will be scared to lose what you have, but you can never be scared to lose what you are. Seven, doing is a product of being. Doing. What you cannot do is because you are not that yet. So if you want to do something, become that thing. Eight, more time is spent on the process than at the event. Let's note that, please. More time is spent on the process than at the event. Go and ask anyone who is an expert. How many minutes is a football match? 90 minutes. But how many weeks and hours do they spend preparing? The process takes more time. So don't die in the process. The event is not as, <laughs> is, is not, uh, is, is very short. So focus on the process. Number nine, if you simply focus on growth, you will enter into your rest. If you simply focus on growth. See, many of our problems, in fact, all of your problems can be solved if you just grow. If you simply grow, all your problems will be solved. Ten, you cannot pray away what your ignorance or lack of growth has brought. You cannot pray away. You cannot pray away what your ignorance or your lack of growth has got. Yes, God is merciful. Yes, God can deliver. Yes, you know, someone said that miracles, the reason why miracles happen is because God just wants to, out of his mercy, correct the mess that we've made of things. So when we begin to glory too much for miracles, it can be a sign of irresponsibility on our part. 11. If you lack understanding, you will despise your capacity. If you lack understanding, you will despise your capacity. That's what happened with Esau. Esau despised his inheritance. And though he cried for repentance, there was nothing left for his father to bless him with. Number 12, if you try to look like what you have not yet become, you will pay dearly for it. If you try to look like what you have not yet become, you will pay dearly for it. 12, 13 rather, because it is small does not mean it is worth less. Because it is small does not mean it is worth less. Number 14, it is, a it is dangerous not to grow because as long as you remain a seed, you are vulnerable. It is dangerous not to grow. As, long as, you, you, as far as you've not grown, there is danger that the bed can come and eat your seed, basically, is what he told us. 15, potential leads nowhere without growth. 17, 16, you will not begin to grow until you accept that you know nothing. You will never grow until you accept that you know nothing. That's why the Bible says, with a, with a humble heart, accept the engrafted word of God. So as far as somebody is speaking or teaching or whatever, and you assume that you know, you can't benefit from what that person is saying. And lastly, in module 3, which he, he said, he, anyways, we'll speak about that later. He said, things will not change solely by time alone. Things will not change. In fact, if only time is involved in your change process, it's rottenness that will happen. If only time is what is involved in your change process, rottenness is what will happen. But if you know the kind of change that you want, your input must be there. Someone said most people don't participate in their own rescue. I pray that that will not be our portion in Jesus' name. I want you from the bottom of your heart to just pray for our brother who has richly blessed us today. Let's just pray that God will pour more anointing on him. Let us just pray that God will continue to empower him, that everything that he's taught will not mock him in the future. Go ahead and begin to pray for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your son, Brokayade, okay, whom you've so richly used to bless us. I pray, O oh God, that the word of God will not be mocked in his life. Everything that he has taught us, O oh God, Lord, you will cause the results, O oh God, as he begins to walk in that. Lord, we pray that you will cause the results, O oh God, to be made manifest. People will not mock him, O oh God, saying with all that he knows, this is, the, this is where he is at. I pray, O oh God, that you will bring him, O oh God, both in stature, in spirit, in finance, in material, and in every sphere of his life, O oh God. Let there be a manifestation of 
everything that you've deposited in him in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. You see, action is the only thing that can bring change. What you know does not matter until you have done it. They that know their God, it starts with knowing, shall be, they become, and they shall do. All those three things must happen. You're going to go ahead and begin to pray for yourself and say, Lord, everything that I have, I have learned today, the strength, the grace to begin to walk in them, the, the, the patience, oh God, the endurance that it takes to begin to practice every single thing that I, I have been taught today. Lord, give unto me in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, oh God, for the grace. So much has been given to us today, oh God. The grace to practice everything that you've given us. Lord, give unto me. I can't do it by myself. Some of these things are so hard. I can't lie. But Lord, with man, it is impossible. But with you, all things are possible. The grace, oh God, to do, give unto me in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we prayed. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's time to give our offering. It's time for offering. Offering time. Blessing time. Praise the Lord. All right, let's prepare our, our offering. Please, if we can share that on the screen, the bank, the church bank account. You notice that I'm not trying to encourage anybody to give. It's not every time we quote scripture. <laughs> it's not every time, so I'm not even going to engage in that. Praise the Lord. I believe that some of us have prepared it or already given. Let's just go ahead and, and thank God for giving us to be able to give. Let's just ask that he will accept our offering in the name of Jesus. And as we give, let's just begin to ask that that every resource that we give to the church, that God will multiply it for his work in the name of Jesus. We are looking for a place. When we find a place, we'll need to refurbish it. And, you know, a lot of things will need to be done. Let's just go, that, pray, go ahead and pray that God will multiply everything that we are giving. As he multiplied bread for the 5,000, for the 4,000, let him multiply what we are giving so that it will be enough. It will even be more than enough to do all that we need to do. And as we pray for, the, for him to multiply everything we're giving to the church, let's also pray that he will multiply in our lives, that we will not lack any good thing, that every area that we need his, his, his blessing, that he will go ahead and bless it in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the grace to give. We thank you for the willingness to give. Lord, per adventure, oh God, there is lack in any life, and it has prevented them from giving. Lord, you alone knows. I pray, oh God, that you will see to their situation and answer them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you will replenish as many who have given, oh God, from a place of love. Lord, I pray that you will replenish them in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that is lacking in their lives, oh God, whether it be finances, Lord, whether it be wisdom, whether it be understanding, whether it be promotion, whether it be new clients, whatever it is, oh God, anything that represents lack in their life, I pray, oh God, of all sufficiency. Lord, meet them at the point of their needs, O oh Lord, speedily in the name of Jesus, that we may know that you indeed are Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I will give our offering um, the Golden Arena News. I believe it should be ready. Thank you so much for joining us today. What an amazing service. Now before we go, here's what we have for you on the notice board this week. On Wednesdays at 7 p.m., please join us for our weekly Bible study session. This is a time for us to ask questions and delve more into the Word of God, live on our YouTube channel and on Zoom. Don't forget the time is 7 p.m. every Wednesday. 
Now during the week we also have the men and women's prayer meetings. The men's prayer meeting takes place every two weeks on Fridays at 7 p.m. And the women's prayer meeting takes place every Saturday at 7 a.m. All of these meetings are still going to be online for the time being. On Sundays at 9 a.m. we have our Sunday school service which takes place before the main service. Please ensure that you come early to church, the time is 9 a.m. And finally on Sundays at 6 p.m. after the service we have our congregational prayer meeting which is a time where we pray for individuals, we pray for the church and we pray for the nation. So please make sure that you attend. This service is also online and further details about every service I've mentioned will be sent out to us throughout the course of the week. Now, it wouldn't be a complete month in Golden Arena if we didn't round it off with our Worship Sunday. Every last Sunday of the month, we gather here to come and give complete, utter praise and worship unto God and thank Him for everything He has done during the course of the month. It's a time of unrestricted worship, and it's so important for us to be here to come and to round off the month with complete and utter praise and worship to God, to thank Him for everything He has done for us during the course of the month and just to celebrate Him. It's so important for us to do that before we head off into a new month. Please join us. Now as we go forth, please make sure that you're still staying safe and where you can keep in all social distancing rules. That's all the announcements we have for you on the notice board this week. Thank you once again for joining our service today. I hope that you will go forth and have a wonderful week. Take care everyone. Bye. Praise the Lord. Let's rise to close this meeting. I want you to begin to pray for yourself. God has given us a promise. God has given us a word, even for the year, that He will do a new thing. Trade with that word, run with it, so that you can see the physical manifestation. As God is equipping us for all that we need to become to be able to handle. Even his word. Pray for yourself this morning that you will handle testimony. The newness of God will come upon your life. Every long standing issue, God of heaven will come through for you. God will come through for your family. Talk to the Lord this morning. Whatever your issue is, with God there is abundance of mercy. Father, we thank you. Let's begin to pray for our world. All the nations of the world. We can hear the drum of war all around us. But God is the one that rules in the affairs of nations. Lord, please have mercy upon our nations. Touch the heart of the world leaders. The Bible says, once God has spoken, two eyes have heard. All power belongs to God. Everyone that thinks of them themselves as powerful. Lord, arrest their hearts. Let them know that you are the God that rules in the affairs of men. Have mercy upon our nations, O oh God. Help our leaders to do what is right. Silence the voice of war in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let your peace reign, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. Let this our world let it reference you. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done. Lord, help us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name, O God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. I read to you, even from the book of Psalm, Psalm 125, and it says, Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved but abide forever. As mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround his people from this forth and forever. For the scepter of the wickedness shall not rest on the land allotted to the righteous. Let the righteous reach its hand or her hand out to iniquity. So Father, this morning, according to your word, as we go forth from this assembly, we pray that your presence will surround us 
in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your presence will abide with us in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Nothing will cause us to be moved. Nothing will cause us to be shaken in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. You will hide us in the tabernacle of your name. For the scripture says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. We declare, we decree safety even for everyone and our household in the name of Jesus. As we go into this week, O oh God, the rod of the wicked will not rest upon our lot in the name of Jesus. You will help us, O oh God, to live above sin. We will not fall into temptation in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. No sin will have dominion over our lives. We will rule and we will dominate. The goodness of the Lord shall be made manifest all around us in the name of Jesus. And our lives, O oh God, will continually be a witness of your goodness and your faithfulness. Father, we say thank you. Blessed be your name, O oh God. In Jesus' precious name, Name we have prayed. Uh, before we we'll share the grace, we we'll have two people here who are joining us for the very first time. Miss Ifeulua Adebiyi. Please just wave to us where you are. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. We are glad that you are here with us. Be God perfect everything concerning you. And we have Miss Itunolua Olagunju. We, we love you too and want to say we love you. Everyone around them, give them good in arena. Welcome. You are here on the purpose and we pray that the purpose of God shall, for your life shall be fulfilled. Your coming into this assembly today will be a memorial in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will fulfill your purpose and you fulfill your destiny. Let's just share the grace together this morning. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and prophesy unto them that I agree with you that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. You will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Enjoy your week and the Lord bless you.